and seniors of Brevard. And here is the host of the show, Joe Steckler. Hi, Joe. Hi, John, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, folks, yes, this is Helping Seniors, and our show is designed to inform, educate, and connect people in Brevard that need help with the many, many wonderful resources that we have available in our county. We, um, our work is made possible through our sponsors, businesses. Uh, the fact we do a car raffle, have a couple other fundraisers. But we're like other nonprofits. We depend on you, our listeners, to uh, help us provide these services to others that, that need them. You may not, but you you may have a friend that might need what we do or some of the, the people that are my guests. And like today, uh, I'm going to introduce you to my guest in just a, just a couple of minutes. But uh, what's important is that uh, we recognize that uh, nonprofits are designed to help people, most of us, most of them. And the ones I'm involved with certainly are. And today, uh, we're going to have a two-part show. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of ladies from um, the AARP Back to Work program. We're going to do the first part of the show. And then on the second part of the show, we're going to have Dr. Sheldon. And he wants to talk about coronavirus. And he's got some different uh, things he wants to talk about. And uh, it's uh, it's interesting as what he would like to talk about. So we'll stick with uh, Erica and Lois on the first part of the show uh, so I'll welcome uh, Erica Curlew and uh, Lois Thomas. And uh, Erica, uh, Lois was being very nice, and she said, Joe, I want you to start with Erica first to see what she does so then I can shore her up. <laughs> That's not what she said. Oh, no. That's not what she said. But uh, <laughs> You're too much, Joe. <laughs> Go ahead, Erica, if you can talk after that. <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having us um, come You're out welcome. again um, to educate people about the 50 plus program. Um, Lois really is our facilitator, and she will be able to provide information um, more about the program, how it's set up. My role really is as a career counselor. So after they have attended our workshop, and have uh, seen Lois, I get to talk to them. Or it, let me back up a bit. In the very beginning, I would meet with um, a job seeker who is 50 plus that's needing help with getting back to work, and I'll prep them for our workshops that's coming up. And I'll give them an overview of the program, let them know what to expect. And after they attend the program, then I meet with them again. And this time we're going to be um, looking at possible jobs that they're interested in. We're going to develop an individual employment plan. We're going to work on their resume and just prepare them to be ready to interview with an employer to um, be ready to do job search. So... Really, we try to meet them where they are. You know, I guess I, I sort of failed here. One thing. First, let's go back to the very beginning, Erica, and I, and I should have asked this question. Exactly what is the AARP Back to Work program? What is it and why do you do it? Well, let me let Lois chime in and answer okay. that. Okay, all right, go ahead, Lois. Absolutely. All right, so just to briefly introduce myself, my name is Lois, and I am a customer solutions facilitator for the AARP Back to Work program. And in my role, I coordinate the training throughout the county at all three career source of our locations. We do have locations in Titusville, in Rockledge, and also in Palm Bay. So we've partnered with the AARP Back to Work program to offer this service, which is free of cost, to seniors in our communities, those who are looking to return to work. So whether that is full-time or part-time opportunities, we work with them and meet them where they are to try to provide career guidance assistance for them. 
Okay, so that can include helping them to regain their confidence, upgrade their computer skills, also connecting them with employers, and also helping them to apply strategies in order to meet the demands of today's job market, because you know this, that the job market has changed completely. And even the ways that people job search has changed completely. So before, when they would go and look in the want ads in the newspapers to see what the openings are, Um, whereas then it later transitioned into walking into a business and asking to speak with an employer directly uh, or or management rather to see if they can go ahead and apply to the job whereas now you can walk into that same business dress professionally with a resume in hand and one of the first things that employer will tell you is to go ahead and apply online. So what we try to do is to equip our seniors to give them the knowledge, to give them the resources, to give them the tools that they need to be job ready and face the demands of what has changed and make sure that they have the resources in order to equip them with those changes. Okay, you're sort of opening my eyes. Back to Erica. Erica, and all the people that have come in and uh, that you've interviewed, uh, that, that, that that we're looking to go back to work, seniors. Do you remember what the oldest person was that you it came to you that, that wanted to go back to work? An 80-year-old. How old? And he did get a job. Yay! I think for me, I think <laughs> I had 84, and she did get a job. Yeah. 80. So... Mm -hmm. So anyone 50 years and over, our role is to assist them and also get them to where they need to be. Not everyone coming into our program is looking for full-time opportunities. Yes, we do have some that are, but they may be looking for just something part-time to supplement the income they already have. I think we're getting to part of the the program that I think more of people that that are listening need to understand what the back to work program does. I'm starting to get a better understanding of it. And I still I heard you say eighty four, but Erica, you gotta talk louder. How old was the person <laughs> that you, you work with? How old did you say it was? Eighty years old. Eighty? Yes. See, and what what kind of job did she get? Well it was a male, um and he had been working in food service for a very long time and so he just wanted some work uh, in a cafeteria, so he got a job working uh, with one of the schools in the cafeteria. Okay, all right. I, I, you know, this is. I think this is what, what we really need to talk about. Uh, you, you have a program, and but you know, the, a key word comes up all the time is resume. But mm-hmm. we got people that are on that at work, and you know. There are, are thousands and thousands of people that job do with your work their whole working careers, and they don't, they don't even put enough together to to put together a, a resume, a cement worker, or a a, mm-hmm. a man that uh, that has worked with his hands the, his whole life, and has uh, no computer skills, and didn't need to do any of that stuff, but yet now they find that uh, social security is not enough, and like you said, Lois, I think you had a key key thing there, that you just lose everything. Yes. Okay, John, I think we lost them there. Make sure they can hear me. Can you hear me now, Erica? I can hear you, but not in Okay, right we'll now. just keep talking. They'll, yes. they'll, they'll pick it up. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, so, um, Joe, the program is really designed to help individuals who's been out of the workforce or who is underemployed or who haven't looked for a job in a long time because I get some people who have been in the same job for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You never had to interview in 30 years. You never had to write a resume. And so they come to us needing our help to get them prepared. And that's what we do. We prepare the job seeker. So we're going to work on the resume. We're going to sit down, actually, and talk about the jobs they had over the years. And you've been doing something for the last 10, 15, 20 years. So I help them put it on paper. Well, actually, we put it in the computer and print it out <laughs> on okay. paper. So we have a um, a, a, a resume um, 
a resume builder in our website that will help build, build a resume. And sometimes I'm just sitting with the customer asking, what was the last job you had? Let's enter this in the computer. What did you do? And if, if they can't uh, verbalize what they did, we have resources that, can, that we can go to to figure out what someone would do in a particular job. What they just you, need to come What you do in. is to have somebody put together let's forget the word resume for a minute. You put together sort of like a fact sheet that says, this is what I can do. Yeah. And um, you help them maybe, they don't realize that uh, just through what they've done through their first 50 or 60 years of living their life, that they have developed skills that can be used in other other job markets. And this is some of the things that the Back to Work program does. Yes, absolutely. Okay, now we're getting long drunk. Go ahead, Lois. <laughs> I think you guys Yes, something. absolutely. We really work with them directly to identify where their skill sets are, to see what their professional strengths, what their experiences are. And we have worked, I've worked with individuals who have done entry-level work, right up to our C-suite professionals, CFOs, CEOs, so the participants that we serve are extremely diverse, and I try to make sure when I am addressing them that I meet them where they are to work with them to see where they are and where they would like to go moving forward. And even if they've worked in one particular industry for 20 plus years, oftentimes the job seekers that come in, they would like to use the skill sets they, they previously had and transition it into a new career. So we work with them to identify what their transferable skills are and how we can translate that into a new career career or job moving forward. Yep. You know, some of us have, have managed over the years to put together, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. I, I retired from the Navy. I have a good retirement from the Navy. I have my Social Security. So I'm, I'm pretty well set. So I, I don't have to worry about a second job. I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. But there are thousands and thousands of people out there that, that do need to get a second job just to live. Absolutely. And, and this is the this is why... Uh, folks, I asked both Erica and Lois, I said, what's one of the biggest problems that uh, the Back to Work program has? And and the answer uh, that both the ladies said was uh, publicity, awareness, uh, education in the community. And, and, and that's why we do these radio shows. And that's why. Uh, have, you, have you been on one of the TV shows yet? Not, Not as yet. yet, but it may be on the way. You never know. Okay. No, no. I, I just I didn't know if if we had filmed yet, but we certainly will do that. But oh, we'll thank get, you. We'll get we'll get Eric and and Lois on 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 the twenty five minute TV show, and then that'll be on the Space Coast uh, Television. Eric at uh, Lois is right now making a note to herself to remind me to hold me in my word. Absolutely, <laughs> and, you know it. Like, Joe. I know what she's doing, <laughs> and but. It's, this is the importance, and this is why it's important that we do the radio, and this radio show will be archived. It can be, it'll be on Worldwide YouTube, and uh, if somebody uh, asks Lois or Erica a question, they can say, well, you can go back and listen to what we talked with Joe Stuckler about on this certain day. It's not, we're not locked into anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have a, uh, let's talk about uh, this, uh, the seven strategies that you have to, to help people uh, under, what is the purpose of the seven strategies? What do they do? Eric and, and, and Lois, both please, both of you share uh, uh, your comments on that. Okay. Well, again, I just want to thank you for this forum today because one thing that you did mention is really getting the word out about our program. And that's one of the challenges that we have faced with this program is we have these awesome services that we offer to our senior community. And so now we're really in an effort to get the word out to job seekers so they are aware because every time I have someone attend one of our workshops, they said, wow, I cannot believe you all offer such great services. And I always tell them, share the word with your coworkers, share the word with your neighbors, share the word with people that you may attend church with to get that word out there. Because again, I kind of consider us as a hidden gem that not too many people are aware, but I feel now we're heading towards that as we host more workshops, as we host more events, as we get out in the community, now people are really becoming aware of the different services we offer, not only through the AARP Back to Work program, 
but also through career source provide. So thank you for this opportunity, no, Joe. I'll offer, I'll offer a piece of advice mm-hmm. to both of you because I sense that you have a passion for Absolutely. wanting to do what you do, Erica mm-hmm. and Lois. And that's the same thing I had with uh, all the programs. I started first with the Alzheimer's Foundation and uh, building an endowment that would be there to help people and to make sure the program didn't fail. And that's one of the biggest challenges we face now with uh, helping seniors, and that's to uh, put a, a good, solid fundraising program. Now, I don't want to say a fundraising, but I want to say a uh, financial program in place to underwrite the program. We try to do that through sponsors because we try to get the sponsors that are involved in the same thing that we are and, and that they want to help people. And uh, it is a way to advertise their business, certainly. Mm-hmm. And, but if we can get people involved in helping us underwrite these programs, then we get people that are interested and will support us. And if there's anything, and people say to me, Joe, why would you do this? I said, because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I I sense that both of you have that same passion. That's why I asked the ladies before the show started, folks, about their background. And, uh, you know, it it helps me a lot when when I do a show to know what people why they want to do something? Why do you, mm-hmm. why why do you really care? Mm-hmm. And 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 this is not an easy subject that we're talking mm-hmm. about today. No. It's hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, what are some? Eric, I gotta get you to talk. What are <laughs> some of the biggest challenges that you think that um, the back to work program and you both work for Career Source, but it, it's all it's all part of a big thing. You want to help people. What are some of the biggest challenges other than publicity that you think that 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 you would like for, for people that might need our your services? What are some of those things? Um, I I think the people the people that I serve the population I serve uh, because they are older a lot of them aren't in tune with technology, and so when they come to us it's. Um, it's difficult for them, and they are sometimes afraid. You know, I, I don't use the computer. I don't do email. But this is the world we live in. So one of the biggest challenges to getting them to get comfortable with using the computer, um, using email, being able to log into your email, you have to create a password for almost everything. Mm-hmm. So I would say that's one of our biggest challenges. Okay, let's say if somebody comes in and you see that they're not dressed nicely, uh, do you have a connection to you? What do you, you know what I'm going to ask you. What do you do? What do you do, Lois? <laughs> you got an answer. Yes. Well, we do offer supportive services through our AARP Back to Work program. So once they go through our workshop and um, – we identify that they are in need of supportive services. And by supportive services, it's really supportive, excuse me, supportive services designed to help them in the job search process. So whether that's interview clothing, that even covers um, teeth whitening, it even covers interview shoes, haircut, hair dye, hair color, because we want them also makeup as well. <laughs> We want them to be able to compete with confidence. So if we have someone who has an interview scheduled in two days and they have absolutely nothing presentable to wear to an interview, we can provide them with assistance. Even gas assistance to get to and from the interview, we can provide assistance with that as well. Also gas assistance to get to and from recruiting events. So we offer these services, again, that many people do not know that we offer. Offer. So, again, a forum like this is always helpful so we can share and spread the word about what is offered and how we can assist so our job seekers can compete with confidence. Okay. You're, yes. both, re- you're both like recruiters and you do this and you, you send people to somebody for, for a prospective job. Years ago, I took a young man to the Marine Corps recruiting station and I was going to try and help him get in the Marine Corps. And he had an eye piercing oh. in, his, in his eye, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and eyelid. And I said, don't you think you should take that out? He said, I, I can't take it out. 
Mm-hmm. I said, you're not going to get in a Marine Corps going mm-hmm. in to see a recruiter mm-hmm. with, a, with an eye piercing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I couldn't get him to take it out. He didn't, he didn't get in a Marine Corps. <laughs> but, you know, it's, we have to have a, a, a better understanding of the job market today. And I think this is, this is one of the things I think that the back to work program does that you mm-hmm. don't talk about. And it is that it helps a potential applicant understand that there's give and take. It mm-hmm. has to be both on a part of the person seeking the job mm-hmm. and the person offering the, the job. job. Absolutely. Absolutely. And during the workshops that I facilitate, that's one of the things that I really stress. Also, getting them prepared. So that's from step one all the way to the end, because it's important for them to be knowledgeable about the labor market trend. So what are those in-demand jobs? What are those in-demand occupations and how what they need to do to get themselves ready for either a job or career in that field. So we show them exactly how and where to search for that information. And we also help them with getting their resumes prepared. We also assist them with interviewing skills. So I even host a mock interview in the workshop series. So that way they have an opportunity. If they haven't interviewed in some time, they have an opportunity to practice those interviewing skills and hone those interviewing skills. Uh, We also have for our intensive workshops, we have three to five employers from around the county come into the workshop and talk about what they look for in potential candidates. So it really is a comprehensive program to really assist our job seekers and help them to get where they need to be professionally. Lois and Erica, if somebody wants to avail themselves of your services, I'm going to ask this a couple of times and give people the time to get a pencil Mm -hmm. and paper and write the number down, but how do they contact you? Okay, so they can actually call our career source offices directly if they are interested in the back to work program, the seven smart strategies specifically, they can call the toll free number so they can call it directly from their phone. And that number is 855 855- Eight five zero two five two five. Again, that number is eight five five eight five zero two five two five. They can also visit any one of the career source of our locations and just ask about the program and they'll be directed or they can also call career source Brevard and that number is three two one. Five zero four seven six zero zero. Again, that number is three two one five zero four seven six zero zero. And let me go ahead and add the times. Our center is open Monday through Thursdays from nine to six p.m. And on Fridays we're open from eight to twelve. You just need to walk in. Uh, you don't need an appointment. You just um, come in and ask about the program, and one of us will talk with you about the program. I hope people listening to the show today have uh, paid note of what Erica and Lois are are, uh, trying to get across here. Um, I think it's extremely important that we do the TV show. And uh, this is something, because it's more of a... uh, of a community service if we get this this down in, in a 25-minute TV show and we really, really pinpoint what we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And uh, because there are certain things, we, we've, we, we, we've sort of gone over a lot here today, but mm-hmm. I think, I hope, I hope uh, Eric and Thomas and Lois, that we've, we've sort of uh, told people that, uh, what they need to know. Uh, got to wrap it up? I got to wrap it up. Erica, Lois, thank you both for being here, and we will have you back again, and I, I just want to thank you, and I hope people, please, if you if you didn't get all, and the number from uh, from Lois or Erica, call the off, our office at 473-7770, and Kim can direct you to uh, Lois and Erica. So, thank you both very much. Thank you so much thank for having us, Joe. You're quite yeah. welcome. Thank Bye. you so much for having us. Yeah. Bye-bye. Good one. Once again is Joe Steckler. Thank you, John, and uh, we're uh, welcome to the second half of the show. We're waiting for Dr. Sheldon to call in, and uh, 
Uh, Lee, if you're listening on the other radio in your office, uh, give me a call here because I, 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 we don't have a lot of time left to talk. We're on the we're, time. Time is a moving on, but Lois stayed with me, folks, here in the, in the, in the uh, studio, and. Uh, but before I uh, say anything else, I'd like to just remind everybody that the, the big event for us coming up is our car raffle on uh, 25 April at the American Muscle Car Museum. And uh, we are asking for a donation of $25 for one ticket. And, uh, uh, you can call. and uh, we're asking for uh, and there are five tickets for $100. But... This is one of the ways that we underwrite the cost of our program. Uh, we don't charge for our services. Uh, it's just like uh, Lois and the Back to Work program. It's all free. It's all designed to help people in our community. And that's one of the tough things, folks, is about finding people that have a passion for what they want to do. And, uh, you know, I, I had Lois and uh, and Erica on the, on the show once before. And other two, uh, I think I think you, Lois, might be a little more aggressive. And uh, you, 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 you're 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 a talker. You like you like me. It's got to kind of hard to keep us quiet if we want to mm-hmm. talk about something mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. you know, um, wanting to do something. Ah, oh, there comes Doctor Shell, and he's calling in now. But uh, you know, wanting to do something is, is really important, and I, I think that is. And and, and she, yes, she's going to stick with us, folks, because we're going to talk about coronavirus with Dr. Sheldon. That's you, Lee. Is Lee on? Okay, it wasn't Lee calling. Okay. No, let's talk about this. Uh, go back to and uh, ask Lois a question again. Um, has the subject of coronavirus come up with uh, with you all back at the AARP workshop program? <laughs> I know, it's, but has it? Well, to be honest with you, there was a slide that actually got rid of off of one of my presentations because typically when for an interview, we have our participants professionally greet whoever they will be meeting with. So we've been having quite a few recruiting events at the office. And, of course, we want to make sure that everyone is safe and everyone is using the proper precautions, hand washings, hand sanitizers, things of that nature. So a greeting in a professional environment that we typically see is, of course, I see you for the first time. I extend my hand to greet you. Whereas now with everything that's going on, you can imagine we're seeing a lot less handshakes. (laughs) <laughs> People don't want to shake hands. No, not not as before. Not as before. It's the same thing in church. Mm-hmm. With um, uh, we have the, the greeting in in the church, and people uh, uh, have, a, have a tendency to maybe want to uh, mm-hmm. to uh, not touch somebody else and just sort of wave at them. And mm-hmm. uh, and I notice that uh, uh, people get scared easily and mm-hmm. i'm not saying to uh mm-hmm. to uh to uh ignore the fact that coronavirus mm-hmm. is a very serious thing and it is killing absolutely people. it's serious and uh people my age group are very vulnerable to it but you mm-hmm. know i i think of uh different situations we have in our country the colleges uh, where with these huge dorms and you, mm-hmm. you look, I think of uh, the school I went to, the Naval Academy. Is Lee on now? Okay. Hi, Lee. Can you hear me, Lee? Okay. We're, we're trying to get him on. So, uh, but at the Naval Academy, he got to one of the largest dorm in the world, and mm-hmm. he got uh, 4,400 uh, students in mm-hmm. six wings at, the, at mm-hmm. the Naval Academy. And you can imagine the concerns that they, uh, if they don't have, they probably should have Mm -hmm. when you've got that many people in close contact. Mm -hmm. Well, even we held a pretty fairly large size workshop last week, and we just wanted to make sure everyone had hand sanitizer. Of course, we're wiping down our tables and things of that nature uh, to make sure that it is a safe environment. And I don't wouldn't say that people should worry, but you should definitely educate yourself on what the coronavirus is and to make sure that you are using the proper protocol, washing your hands, using hand sanitizer. If you're touching anything afterwards, make sure you wash your hands again. 
Um, so to just make sure you educate yourself because it is very real. And so you want to make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Okay. Good. Okay, and uh, all right, Joe. I think we have uh, Lee Sheldon on the line. Shelvin? Let's uh, let's try that hey, one Lee, more time. Hey, Lee, can you hear me there? Yeah, hi. hi okay, so. hi, Lee. Um, Lee, you you could you hear uh, Lois and me talking about coronavirus? Yeah, I just heard a little bit about it about washing surfaces or okay, uh, something about a meeting going on or something like that, but. Uh, Washing your hands before and after, and wiping, wiping down <laughs> countertops, which sounds pretty much like what we're talking about here. Yeah, but what? Did, what? Did, uh, I don't want to get ahead of this thing here, but uh, you know, first one of the things you sent me some 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 important pertinent points to talk about. But you know, one of the things that I, I that I wanted to ask you what 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 really are your impressions of the of of the coronavirus itself as as a doctor a dentist a man that's uh you're working with patients in close contact what 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 are some of, what's your take on some of it lee I think a part of it is our assuring our patients that we're doing everything we can to make sure that everything everything is okay and the other part of it is, is protecting ourselves i don't think there's anything different that we should be doing now than we should be doing uh at any other time but at the same time, we are doing more. We are doing different things. Um, we, at one time, we were, we've always washed our hands. Of course, that's part of what you do in a dental practice. But now we're asking our patients when they walk into our treatment rooms, we're asking our patients to wash their hands as well. Uh, because our patients are touching things. And so, uh, and our patients are accepting that very, very well. Um, so patients are washing their hands uh, when they start, and they're washing their hands before they leave, just as we are. There are some times also that we might wash our hands before we walk into the treatment room, and the patient isn't scratching his head or scratching her head. <laughs> Did they wash their hands or not? Now, of course, uh, I've made sure that every staff member knows you wash your hands in front of the patient once the patient gets there. So that a lot of this is more reassurance um, than anything else. But I've got to tell you, even our front desk area now, uh, we're wiping down the countertops every hour. We're going out to the doorknobs and doorknobs that we might not have ordinarily wiped down. We're wiping them down now four times a day and making sure those doorknobs are, are clean. So we're really attuned uh, ourselves to to the surfaces that we're touching and um, and and we're cognizant of it, and we're we're, we're wiping all of those areas down and, and keeping them clean. So, are you are were, were you saying you, in your office you're you're uh, uh, washing down the the door handles and stuff like that? That's right. Yeah, yeah, including the door the the door uh, door entry. You know where we might clean that uh, when the when when our cleaning person comes. So, so that that would happen once a week. Now we're doing it several times a day. Yeah, but how about say during the day? Um, it, it, this is can't hear you now, Joe. So I, I know we're having difficulty with connection uh, connections today. It's got to be an ongoing thing then. You're cleaning all the time, all right, Lee? Um, Did we lose Lee? Uh, I, uh, I guess uh, we did. I lost somebody. They said they can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Uh, we've got you loud and clear, Joe. We'll try to get Lee back here. Okay. Lee, back on? No, give us a moment. Okay. So Lee mentioned something that we are currently doing a lot at all three of our offices as, as well. As I mentioned, just making sure there's adequate cleaning supplies, hand sanitizers, wiping down doorknobs and things of that nature. And again, we're at a heightened state. We're more cognizant of things that we may have not been cognizant of before. So just making sure that we are using the proper protocol to make sure germs and anything of that nature is not being spread. So I, I, I think that one of the things that Dr. Shelton wanted to talk about uh, is the advantage of uh, 
soap and water uh, mm-hmm. as opposed to hand sanitizer. Mm-hmm. So if Lee, you, if you can hear me, what I'm talking about, we get you back on the line here. Just you just go right ahead and talk your head off about what we're talking about. So, uh, um, oh, we got a got a light here, huh? but uh, ac- actually we were watching on uh, television at. Uh, uh, last night, they were talking about well, us about the advantage of uh, what soap and water can do mm-hmm. in the crevices of the skin on the hands uh, mm-hmm. that uh, hand sanita- hand sanitizer really can't do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think that uh, we place too much emphasis on what the hand sanitizer can do as opposed to what soap and water can do. That, I can hear you great now, Joe. Oh, I can hear you great now too. So we're back away. And this is—it's not communications, Doctor Sheldon. It's uh, get, getting getting the airways to cooperate with what we're trying to do. So you've heard what we've been saying. You pick it up and you talk. I haven't heard a word that you've said. I had to hang oh, up because the, uh, the the connection was totally out. So I don't know where we are. Hey, look. This is it's it's not April Fool Day yet, and and, 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 <laughs> and I have to look and see if I have you on on April. No, I don't have you on April Fool Day. I couldn't handle that. You 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 were t- we were talking about the uh, the difference of, between hand washing and uh, using a hand sanitizer, and I know that you had some comments up on that. Medically speaking, what what are, what are, what's 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 the what's the, the real uh, thing that people need to know about using uh, th- those kind of precautions? Well, I mean, the answer is hand sanitizer will do something, but it doesn't do what open water does. And in fact, I had just seen, it was two weeks ago, where um, someone was demonstrating uh, bacterial growth, or maybe it was viral growth, but it was some kind of bacterial growth after washing hands and after using hand sanitizer. And after washing hands, there was no bacterial growth at all in the particular medium they were looking at. And after using hand sanitizer, there was a lot of bacterial growth there. So, and, you know, hand sanitizer, it's, uh, yes, we've got to, we got to make sure that it's, 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 you're using 70% alcohol. We got to make sure that it's in the right concentration, but still, Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Don't think the hand sanitizer is doing enough. You know, we've been on cruise ships, and and uh, the last few cruise ships, they have put in sinks. And this is well before this virus came about. Um, they put in sinks, and the, people aren't using hand sanitizer when they go into the into the um and i was going to say into the mess but into 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 the dining hall into the restaurant areas um on cruise ships everybody's washing hands they have sinks and and soap and water and and paper towels so by all means do not be reassured that because you have hand sanitizer it's uh it's doing everything that soap and water does soap and water for 20 seconds or more that's what's really getting your hands clean Lee. You know, I know that I know that you you do these things and you and you and you show your patients what you're doing so that it reassures your patients. But what what have your patients' responses been when they see you uh, taking these precautions or maybe talking to them about what? What do your do your patients actually just say something to you? It's interesting. There's been almost no conversation about it. I think, well, don't forget, the patients are washing their hands before I ever get into the into the room. The dental assistant is asking the patient uh, to wash his or her hands. Um, there was some question as to whether we should be shaking hands with people or not, and I suppose we shouldn't. Um, but patients are extending their hands out to me to shake my hand, and I shake their hand, and then I wash my hands. So, um I, 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 is it okay or not? You know, I, I've had some people say, let's just do elbow bumps and, and things like that. You know, I, I think there's a certain amount of practicality that we have to look at here. Um, certainly, we're not in a position where China is or where Italy is. Um, and so this may be, um, I'm, the, the last thing I would say is that, precautions are overblown we have to take precautions i mean 
We still have people. You go into the bathroom, Joe. I don't know if it happens to you, but it's happened. It's easy, I see it every once in a while, and I'm sure your female guest sees it as well. People go into the bathroom in a public bathroom. They go to the bathroom and they don't wash their hands. I mean, we do have a hygiene problem here, and there are some people who just don't give a darn. And uh, we, we all, all all ought to be a little bit more cognizant of hygiene uh, than than we may be. A question. You on on, on on something that you sent to me, the word antibiotics was written down, but you didn't have a question about it. Was there something to be said about antibiotics with this coronavirus? Yeah, this was well before the coronavirus, but I had written an article on antibiotics because people had the feeling that if they had the flu, in other words, if they had a cough, if they had a cold, that they could take antibiotics. And so doctors were prescribing antibiotics at patients' requests. And I got to tell you, for most of those diseases, and certainly for the corona, coronavirus, but it, it, antibiotics doesn't do a thing for the flu except to make you um, <laughs> perhaps immune to some of the bacteria that the antibiotic kills. So at that point, it was the overprescription of antibiotics when I wrote that article in January. But we're not even talking about that anymore. Uh, Lois wrote something down. Do you want to say something, Lois? Oh, no, I was just taking notes on something he had said earlier. But this is very helpful, you know, even with the hand washing versus hand sanitizer, because I've seen some people substitute the hand sanitizer as opposed to hand washing. And it's good to know, even with the hand sanitizer, to make sure that it's 70% alcohol, but still soap and water is actually better. So that was very informative for me. So thank you for that. It is. It's true, Laura, and you know, it, uh, you can't buy hand sanitizer on Amazon. So, I mean, <laughs> it's difficult to find the stuff. Yeah. So here's the formula for making your own hand sanitizer. <laughs> Get 70% alcohol, and I'm not talking about drinking alcohol. I'm talking about alcohol that's used for disinfection. Um, Get some aloe vera gel and mix 40% aloe vera gel with 60% uh, alcohol, and you've got hand sanitizer. Wow. <laughs> now you got some real... I, 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 I know that uh, we make a um, an Italian thing called limoncello, and uh, we used... Uh, it was 190 proof alcohol in, in a limoncello, so I guess if I wash my hands with that limoncello, I would really, really <laughs> kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not good for your teeth, Joe. Yeah, well, I could just probably pour enough on the hand to let it drip off the fingers in into my mouth and the, and probably drink it and clean it at the same proof, time. Man, don't but, light a mess of that stuff. <laughs> Listen, all joking aside, mm-hmm. coronavirus is something to be taken seriously. But I think, Lee, what you were saying, it's, it's not something that we want to overreact to but be sensible and smart about it because uh, we've seen what can happen with the stock market. And every time we put the fear factor into something uh, and, and on the eye, on the shot, it's going to do some good to help people. Think about the numbers of jobs that can be quickly lost. And uh, when, uh, when, when there's nothing that happens like in the cruise industry or the uh, airline industry that doesn't have an impact somewhere along the line. And by by overreacting, we, we hurt a lot of people. And at the same time, by underreacting, we can hurt a lot of people. And I go back and think about um, I lost my own grandfather. I never knew him because uh, he uh, was killed in the flu epidemic in 1917, and th- and that was worldwide, and millions of people lost their lives. You know, correct? It's true, and, you know, the same with the flu now, but we don't know everything about this coronavirus yet. You know, we don't have enough cases in the United States. We haven't been able to test for it until, until this week, and, and so we don't know really what the prevalence is. It's serious, and particularly the people who are listening to this show. You know, the elderly, the people who are immunocompromised, the people who have have lung problems, you know, you shouldn't be on a cruise ship. You shouldn't be on an airplane. You should be uh, isolating yourself in order to protect yourself. And for those who are sick, 
you know, one time, you know, I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to go and work while I'm sick. Well, no, please don't stay home and, and, and make sure you're okay. Understand that you're most contagious according to, uh, according to the authorities right now, at least what we know. You're most contagious when you are sick. It's the, you know, that isn't the idea that you're a carrier. We're not even as concerned about surfaces, although we're cleaning surfaces. It's you can catch it from droplets from someone else when you are sick. So please, if you're sick, stay home. Okay. Uh, you're saying something, and Lois is reacting to it. Lois, what? I, I, I want you to get what were you, what were you, what were you concerned? <laughs> I'm just agreeing with him. I was actually at a church service on um, this past Sunday and the young lady who was making the announcement said the same thing. She said, well, if you're not feeling well, it's okay to stay home. We stream live so you can catch the replay. <laughs> so I was just <laughs> laughing to myself with that. <laughs> but it goes back to, um, it all goes back to about, Paying attention to what what the situation is, and that's the same thing that, that you do in your own practice of dentistry. Lee. If if you, you keep the place clean and you keep you you you, you 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 just have to be aware of what the immediate situation is. Correct. Yep, absolutely right. And you know, keep informed. Hopefully, this is all going to drop off in a month or two, and everything's going to be okay. But it is going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, I'm not saying anything you haven't heard from any other uh, person person who's um, who you know is talking about this. And by the way, the best source that I've seen so far that's simple is coronavirus.gov, coronavirus.gov. Um, it's spelled out very very well there. It is updated every day. That's good advice. That's good advice. And, and uh, we're just about to we go down to one minute. Uh, um, is there any other comment, Lee, that you'd like to make about the coronavirus, or uh, um, that might be helpful to our listening audience? You know, I think uh, it, we talked about hand sanitizer. I, 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 it is soap and water, soap and water, soap and water. You cannot wash your hands too much. That means you wash your hands before you do something. You wash your hands before uh, after you do something. And, you know, I put my hands to my mouth and to my face and my nose all the time. I'm really getting conscious of keeping my hand away. And if my nose itches, fine, let it scratch itself. <laughs> I can make a comment, but I won't. I won't. I won't. I, I could say there's. I could say there's a lot to scratch, but that that would not be true. <laughs> okay, Lee. Thank you for being with us today. I always enjoy, and we just don't. We just don't have enough time. We're out of time, and I want to thank you, Dr. Sheldon, for, for being with us today, and you, uh, Lois uh, Thomas, from AARP Back to Work program. Uh, listeners, please listen and, and act with what uh, Dr. Sheldon is talking about. Precaution, precaution, precaution. So I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.